It's been there since the foundation of the world. Reshaping man's thoughts and ideas of life and redirecting man's pursuit in life to fit its agenda. It's a matter of these guys working through men endlessly using every way to hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's Mammon, the spirit behind money. Charles and Susan Opil in their book Unmasking Mammon help their readers unmask this deadly spirit and embark on a journey back to the Father. Unmasking Mammon is a must read. Now available on Amazon and on order at cyruscom254 at gmail.com for physical copies. Grab your copy today and start off your journey to overcoming the spirit of Mammon. Unmasking Mammon by Charles and Susan Opio. Hello and welcome to the Cyrus community. This is Business Unusual. This is where we talk matters, kingdom business reformation. And we're talking about the believer in the marketplace where they find their space. And once you find your place, you will thrive. That one you know for sure. Because we're talking about that the blessing of God is already inside of you. You need to express it. So you're not going to the marketplace to look for what to do. You're going to the marketplace to find where you need to be. Because once you find your space, you thrive, you affect humanity, and you, of course, you feel satisfied with your life in the earth. Now, in our last conversation, we talked about are you a consumer or are you a producer? What does that mean? We said that the word of God comes to you us like the rain comes from the heavens. But once the word of God comes into you, it causes, it brings two things. It brings seed and it brings bread. Now, it depends with your mentality and your relationship with God and what you want in the kingdom of God. And if that is what determines what you will access from the word that you receive. So every time you receive the proceeding word, do you receive seed or do you receive bread? I hope if you watched our last conversation that you've sat down to really go through your life and ask yourself, what is it I look for in the word? Mm. Am I looking for bread? Mm. Am I looking for seed? Yes. Because we said that a consumer yes. and a producer are two different people when it comes to fulfilling yes. the purposes of God. It's in almost the interesting that the, the producer produces wealth because they are consumers. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because if you produce and nobody's consuming, you do not produce wealth. But if you're only consuming, you're, pro you're actually part of the process mm -hmm. that is producing wealth for another. So it's important to understand that that is the core process. So the kingdom business reformation that we talk about is primarily the activation of producers and developers. So we are talking about the market space. Yes. Means you find the place where you are producing. Yes. In the marketplace, think of a market. When you go, you find everybody seated there and everybody is selling their stuff. Yes. Now, they don't have a place. That is where you are all rushing for clients, no matter what place you're talking about. Mm. But once you find your space, you get comfortable. Oh, yes. And that's why you're saying a yes. producer yes. cannot produce if you've not found your space. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yeah, because production takes time. Yeah. Production takes knowledge. Production takes skill. Mm -hmm. Production has got other parameters that make it possible. Listen, consuming is easy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> production is the key. When God said he gave us power to produce wealth, he's talking about production. Mm. Consuming is a given. Mm. Nobody struggles. Nobody needs to be trained to consume. And consume does not take uh, does not take any initiative yes. you don't have to remember when you talk about production we are talking about taking first of all pub, uh, yes. uh, personal responsibility yes yes we're talking about taking time to think before you do yes i think you're saying that consumers yeah. there's no thinking no, no, there's all you need to do no is struggle. like jacob yes. uh iso i'm hungry just have a need and you'll consume a, <laughs> you have yeah. a need yeah, and my consume. need it needs to be fulfilled now that's it okay that's it mm -hmm. so the question that one asks then, how are we meant to interact with the wisdom that multiplies seed mm. and not necessarily only pursue bread? We said bread is always an out output. Yes. It's a given. So we want to walk through a practical biblical example. There are a number, but we want to stay with one because 
to us, it's one we look at so many times. Oh, yes. And we've seen so many parameters and dynamics out of it. We can teach so many different dynamics from it. We've taught master classes off of it, mm -hmm. and we continue to develop concepts out of it because I think it's one of the most powerful um, examples in scripture, yes. practical, of how you can walk from a place of, even if you began by looking for bread, this scripture can help you change the mindset mm. and shift to seed and end up still having bread. So actually our conversation today yes. is where we are telling the consumers, yes. listen to the word, see an example that can help you yes. migrate from being a consumer yes. to a producer. Exactly. And like you're saying about this scripture, yes. whenever you're walking in this kingdom journey, mm. Every step of the journey, there are scriptures that talk to you more yes. than others. Yes. There are some scriptures that are more real to you yes. than others. Yes. And that's what you're saying, that this particular one, yes. it's like it talks to us from every side. Yes. No and, matter and, where you look at it It's very powerful because as we discussed in the last conversation, mm -hmm. we say that the problem with the church is currently constituted is that there's been this mindset that whenever we come towards our word, we are looking for bread. Mm. We come towards our word, we are looking for bread. And this is kind of a default thing with the most of us. So as you look at this scripture, you'll see it is usually the default, but it can be changed. Okay, this is Second Kings 4, yes. 1 to 7. Yeah. There's a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets who cried out to Elisha saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in, your, in the house? And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, do not gather just a few. But when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is no... There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. Now, like we said, this scripture is so powerful with so many multiple layers. Yes. Those of you in the master class will remember how we extracted from this scripture how to get out of debt. That's a whole teaching all by itself. Yes. So there are so many dynamics here. But we want to deal today with the simple context of seed and bread. Mm -hmm. How do we apply seed and bread in this particular scripture and still get truth? Mm -hmm. And the best way is to understand that when this woman first showed up to the prophet, you can tell that by her attitude she was looking for bread. Mm. She didn't come asking for the seed. <laughs> no. Because how do you know that? When you say that the creditors are coming, yeah. like tomorrow they'll be here Thank and they you. are coming for my son. Exactly. What are you doing? You're showing the urgency. prophet the urgency of the situation. Yep. This is where I am yes. and I need a miracle now. now. And by the way, you are the man of God. You're the man of God. You're mm -hmm. the source of miracles. Yes. So there are powerful scenarios she was in and sadly many of the times this is how we come to God and mm. what do we expect? We expect the debt to be fixed now or maybe the creditor to be spoken to or maybe somebody to bail us out, give us another loan mm. so we can mm. get out of the other It's problem. almost you're always looking for a way out now exactly. and you never sit to think and say wait yes. a minute if we are in this situation yes. and I borrow Yes. If the situation comes again, exactly. How will I get out? Will I get out with the same way I got out the first time? Yes. So that's why people find themselves in cycles of debt Absolutely. or borrowing. Absolutely. Or you ask yourself, in the last 10 years, yes. in the last 15 years, my life has not changed. Why? Because every time this situation arises, I go back to the default yes. uh, uh, mode. Yes. And that's the mode of borrowing. Absolutely. Or maybe just say, you no, know, do this. Eh? Just get me out of here. Prayer, prayer, there prayer. There you go. Get out. And, and I have to really sit here a bit because okay. sadly, <laughs> yeah. sadly, believers, mm. many mm. of you have done this route many times mm. and you've not seen anything change much. Or uh, at least sometimes there's been a small alleviation of the problem. Yes. Because in the end, somebody lends you digging the hole deeper. Mm. You end up losing a relationship. Sometimes 
somebody pays it off mm. but doesn't change how the problem came and again if somebody gives you or bails you out what is it that is planted in your mind there is no empowering seed that exactly. tells you you can get yourself out exactly. of debt so every time a situation arises the first thing your mind tells you you have no ability to get yourself exactly. out so what do you do the easiest thing and the only thing your mind locks to yes. is somebody else needs to come and get me exactly. out exactly and you see the, the the situation in the bible that every time god meets with man yes. he's always trying to get man to this place of stand that's it why the word of god can cause you to be the one helping somebody else who does not understand to come out yes. now don't be the person who seems not to understand all the time there and you, you need to be built out and you see what, what would have happened Classical scenario, and I'll say this because this is many times the African church result. Mm -hmm. and, and not anybody else. And this happens with ministers. Ministers, we have to start accessing God for solutions, not for shortcuts. Mm. Because sometimes what does a prophet or the man of God say to you? Let me pray for you. The situation is very practical. Mm. I am in debt. The creditor is coming. Let's pray. Sometimes That's you're sent the back. Answer. That's not the answer. <laughs> Sometimes you're sent back to go pray more. Mm. Go fast more. Mm. Go give. Yes, sometimes you don't have. give a seed. You're already in debt. Mm. I think you said something. That when we looked at this scripture in the master class, we said yes. something that debt needs to be paid. Simple. Not to be prayed for. Simple. Not to be fasted. You can't fast away Simple. debt. You have debt. The Bible shows us principles that you need to pay it. But God has given you way out of how exactly. to pay debt. So if you come and say, as a man of God, yes. somebody comes to you and they say they have debt and you pray for them, yes. what do you call that? There's nothing I'm solving. Let me explain mm. this. Mm. <laughs> man of God, there's a time when wisdom is needed, not mm. anointing. Mm. Mm. Explain, please. <laughs> <laughs> See, anointing, the Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke. Okay. So assume it was a demonic thing. Mm. You can decree and it moves. I, I, if it was a sickness, something that is out of practical life, this is not a demon. This is a debt. Mm. This is a real life situation. Yes. Real life situations require real life solutions. Mm. They not require mystical solutions so when you say real life situation yes. here you're talking about this is somebody who you don't just get in wake up and get into debt yes you don't just wake up and say by the way i just found myself exactly in debt. something must have happened and trace your yes. steps yes and the creditor is not a spirit mm. so you don't have to you cannot pray about <laughs> creditor you cannot <laughs> rebuke a creditor it's yes. not a spirit this is a real life outcome of a certain process of life Therefore, it requires, even if it is difficult and complex, it mm. requires wisdom oh, yes. from God. It is not that God will not have a supernatural solution, but notice the term supernatural, we keep saying that. Mm. It is something that comes out of the heavens, but functions in a practical environment. Mm. Supernatural. It follows natural mm. order, even though it has divine principles behind it. Mm. So we are not going to remove the natural order just to mystically jump from A to B. If we do that, one, like you said, it does not change the person. Mm. It solves the problem. So when you talk about a miracle yes. and a supernatural situation exactly. here, you're saying that the miracle is where heaven superimposes in the earth. Yes. You have nothing to do with this. Exactly. Your eyes are, it doesn't involve you. cannot see. Yes. When they see you, didn't say, I did something in the natural. Exactly. Heaven superimposed. Yes. And that's a miracle. Yes. And that's what we are saying, don't live on miracles because exactly. miracles do not give you a process or a progression yes. or a way or a, how did I walk out of this, yes. all right? But a supernatural, you are saying, yes. there is super, that exactly. is the, the unseen, yes. and there is the natural, that's yes. seen. So the so, synchronicity of that mm, is the mm. outcome we are looking for, Yes. number one. Number two, we are looking at a solution, not a fix. Okay. See, if somebody just pays the debt, that's a fix. Okay. So the prophet, first of all, is not going to deal. A true, authentic prophet, a true called one who hears from God, will not give you a fix. They'll give you a solution. Mm. Why is that important? Because the solution makes sure we will not have this conversation again. Mm. Because God is about you moving and progressing from, we always say, glory yes. to glory. What does yes. that mean? That today I'm in a situation, I find the solution, meaning once I find it, I don't have to come back here. In fact, from now on, I will help somebody else exactly. get out of their exactly. problem. So in the kingdom, it's about progression. There you go. You can't be in the same state over 
and over and over. And that's what yes. we call the African church. That's a problem. Yeah. So we go from meeting to meeting looking for the fix. And, and in many meetings, we get a fix. Mm. But by the time the next meeting shows up, we're in a new crisis that needs a new fix. Mm. So it's not that the fixes don't come. But you become fix addicted. Mm, mm. And you become lazy in the spirit. And you're in crisis all the time. Because if we talk about laziness in the spirit, we are simply yes. saying that this is not someone who wants to think a situation out. Yes. It's easier to pray it out. Why? Because when I pray, do you realize I'm handing over the responsibility to God? Or the man of God. To the man of God. To the air somewhere i'm just throwing away the situation yep. but when i sit down and say i'm going to think through this problem i want to see the wisdom of god and how to apply it here now that takes a lot of personal responsibility exactly exactly yeah? so guys let's separate there are some spiritual things that need spiritual intervention mm. but let us not try and turn natural things into spiritual problems that being one of them exactly <laughs> So once, once that happens, what does the prophet do instead? Mm -hmm. The prophet activates wisdom. What does the prophet do? Switches back to seed, the seed potential principle. Mm. And he asks a question instead. He's not even bothered about the problem. Yeah. He says, what do you have in your house? Mm. Mm. What is he alluding to? That what you already have is what will always be used to get what you need. Mm. You already have something. That's the principle. What do you have? He's that, not asking yes. you. Can we search? Can we look for Meaning when I something? ask you what you have, yes. it is something you should be able Already to know have. and see. Yes. And only the only reason I'm asking you yes. is I am turning your eyes back from exactly. the world into you. Exactly. To from men, seeing men as your provider into you to yes. see that you have what you require exactly. to get what you need. Yes. Sadly, this very same powerful truth has been counterfeited by Mammon. Mm -hmm. And Mammon has driven it into the church to mean what do you have to give? Mm -hmm. This is not what do you have to give. Mm -hmm. This is what do you have to multiply. Remember, seed is about multiplication. Mm -hmm. Seed is not about giving, but the devil lies that what do you have to give so it can be multiplied. Mm -hmm. Do you see how there's a switch? So when you talk about the power of uh, the spirit of mammon, yes. we are saying that mammon, like we said in our book, that mammon speaks. Yes. And mammon reinterprets the Bible. Exactly. And that's why sometimes you find principles in the Bible that are so powerful, yes. but they don't seem to work. Absolutely. Why? It's already been reinterpreted. Not yes. to just say it. Here somebody can tell you what you have in your house so that you can take it and give. And Thank then you. mammon takes the house here to be an outer place where you live. Exactly. That's mammon. What do you have in your house? So what do you do? I can't, you go I think, say, I have something to sell so that I can pay. Give. No, we're not talking about your house where you live. No. The prophet did not send them to their house. The, when you're talking about patterns in the Bible, we are saying that form and function, what do you have in your house? What do you have in your dwelling place? What? Where do you have in you, not what? out? Yes, what is within your control? I think you need to talk about that because yes. many times you'll see people talking about I have something at home there. I'm thinking, and there's somebody else who tells you, seriously, I mean, the only thing I have is my bed. What do you want with it? There you go. So that's what you're so, talking so, about. Uh, for those who've been in the master class, you knew, you know, we went down to the etymology of that word. Okay. And we went down and discovered the word house is the same word dwelling, is the same word that the Bible talks about as being as vessels. Mm -hmm. So it's a principle of what is naturally within you. Mm. What do you have in your own structure? Yes. You're exa Listen, Jesus says, a man who does that which I've taught, who hears the word and does it is like somebody who built a house. Okay. So it means a lifestyle. It means a way of operating. It means something natural within you. Not a way and not something that you can't see. Exactly. Because it is absolutely funny to ask you to go get a thing when the thing is what you're looking for. Mm. The solution here <laughs> is this, is that eventually it will end up with something, but that thing is multiplied by you. So if you talk about the house being there, outer structure yes okay a misrepresentation here yes. if you say for example i have i have a television yes and the man of god tells you then bring it sell it so that you can pay your debt ask yourself mm -hmm. if you sell the television this month what will you sell next week yes next month 
next year. That's so it. are you going to sell out everything, everything to pay? What about when you're done and you have nothing to sell? So yes. do you understand when you say what do you have in your house? You're not asking for things, material things in your house. Exactly. We are telling you, look inside and find out what is it that you have that can get you what you need. Exactly. And that is our conversation. Yes. In our next meeting yes so it's good if you can come <laughs> yes that's the big issue yeah. because the problem here is this the old the lie of mammon is if you give your money it mm. will be multiplied mm. so it is not you multiplying mm. it is somebody else multiplying mm. or god multiplying yes or the anointing multiplying mm. the true principle is that you will multiply mm. So it means you do something. Yes, it means you are the one who will do the multiplying. Mm. It is not that you will give something and it goes and multiplies. And that is why you always hear God saying, Yes. I will bless the work of your hands. That's it. Doesn't say, I will bless your work. That's it. The work of your hands. Your hands. So you cannot come and sit down and say, I have prayed, I have fasted, and I have read scriptures every morning, my devotion, so that now heaven take over. Now that is the weak point of the church yes actually you can call it the weakest link yeah, yeah this is where the church says listen i've prayed i've done now i'm waiting for god to come and god is saying listen there's something in your house that you can use to get what you need yes yeah remember we talked be fruitful multiply, multiply. who multiplies mm. you you don't give something and it goes and gets multiplied. That is a lie. Mm. And that's people have gotten stuck. And the devil has used this principle to rob many people mm. of even the little they had. The seed potential. Yeah, the Where seed somebody potential. says the seed now is money. Yes. Go and give money. Go and give more. No. You multiply so you can give. You don't give so it multiplies. Uh, that's powerful. That's powerful. <laughs> you notice that sometimes you can give yes. of your natural material things yes until you have a problem with god yes. and you don't know how to express it that's it and that's why when you get out of church or yes. the building you'll hear people say no 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 they con they cheat they lie because i gave everything i had and, and god thought. did not do anything yes please let's talk about that yes. because that's a very serious yes. thing in there coming from the church to the yeah. kingdom you thought if you give your money, it will multiply. Mm. No, it does not. It doesn't. You get a word. You can multiply money, then you give. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. You don't give money, it has gone. Now you're waiting for it to be multiplied. Mm. It's not going to happen. What you do is you receive a word, you multiply, and even multiply the money. Mm. Out of the money you have multiplied from the word, you can give. So it is the word here. And the word does not multiply money, it multiplies you. The Bible said in our last in the last scripture that we read in our last conversation, you saw yes. where the Bible talks about I will multiply the store of your seed. Yes. The word comes and multiplies the store of yes. your seed. So it is you who changes, yes. and when you change, you now change your situation. So guess so, who <laughs> multiplies money? You. You. Not, not God. God. <laughs> That's a good one. Simple. That's a good one. That's how it works. So what was her problem? Our problem generally. She despised or mm. did not recognize the seed potential, potential she already had. That's why, what was the first key of wisdom to unlock? The prophet clearly understand, understands nobody, nobody was created without seed potential. Mm. Nobody. Remember this when we talk about Elisha here? Yes. We are saying that in their day, when this was being captured, this whole story yes. if you wanted to hear the voice of god in the earth talk to elijah if god wanted to speak into yes. the earth elijah was the person so that's elijah why sorry this. sorry elisha yes. that's why he's the one who was captured yes. in this story so what yes. is what is the picture that when elisha spoke heaven has spoken yep. god will always look for a man to speak in the earth now today elisha is not a person no. it's a people exactly. it's a corporate people so you hear the voice of god through a man there all right go. and that one anyone will come and argue that no 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 i can hear the voice of god the woman could yes. but she knew something better that listen i'm aware that this is the man that god uses to speak to me yes. i need to hear a wisdom that i don't have that's why i am where i am exactly i think it's so uh, just to go off a bit it's so interesting when somebody comes and tells you, you know what, I'm in this situation, but I can hear God. Why didn't you hear God not to get into the situation? So those are, those are what we call oxymorons. Yeah. If you can hear God, 
the situation shouldn't exist. Mm. It is best to acknowledge on this matter. Yes. I have not heard about it. So this woman knew. Let me hear the word from and she even said she went to the man of God. The Bible yes. says she went back to the man of God and she told him. She did say, wait, do you remember what he said? Go lock yourself, you and your son, pour the oil, mm. yes. and then when the vessels are full, yes. she still went back and said, Wait a minute, I have finished now. What yes. next? Yes. Give me the next instruction. Yes. And she was given an instruction. Exactly. Go sell. Yes. Pay your debt. Mm -hmm. Live on the rest. That's an instruction. Yes. And I think there yes. is also another good place to say yeah. instructions are never complex. Yes. So, so what is crucial, and I don't want you to miss this progression, mm -hmm. because we all know the story. Just like the minute you began to explain it, everybody understood where you're going. Mm. But the first important thing that she had not done, she had not recognized mm. that she already had the capacity. Yes. What was it that she needed to recognize? She needed to recognize that she did not just have the key to get out of debt. She had the key to live in wealth. Mm. So what the prophet was dealing with was not, I'm not going to give you a solution to get out of debt. Mm. Let's get this clear. That's he was powerful. not trying to give her a key to get out of debt. He was giving her a key to live outside debt. Mm. Permanently. Mm. The world does not deal with situations. The world deal, deals with destiny. Would we believe that? It does not deal with this situation, then tomorrow another situation. The world doesn't sit here waiting for situations. Mm. The world looks at a situation and says, let us close this chapter. Who believes that? You know, there are some statements <laughs> that we make. They sound light. But can you imagine you sitting down and saying, wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me that in every situation in my life, yes. I will look at this situation and say, wait, there's a word for this situation that should change it permanently exactly. that I come above that situation exactly. that's the only way when we say that there is a journey you are on and there is a destination to get to the destination it means you have already out overcome this situation yes. overcome another that's what is called growth yes. that's what is called maturity maturity is where you meet this woman now and when you tell her about debt she tells you listen I know a word that can come and bring debt to its knees yes I'm not going to live in fear of getting back to to debt exactly why she's already grown matured past that situation yes so the word comes to matures yes to get us to the next level exactly yeah and, and if you if you paid close attention to her journey is that there was a, a major shift in her journey mm. the journey wasn't just about i'm in debt that's what she said mm -hmm. see this is our problem yes when you come to god we think this is the most important mm -hmm. most critical yes most major issue that God should deal with. Mm. So we already have our little box of, of chaos <laughs> that we think really heaven must move every resource in heaven mm. to fix this chaos. When we show up, God doesn't even look at the chaos. Mm. He looks at the long journey of who you are supposed to be. Yes. What had happened to this woman? Okay. This woman was designed to be wealthy in the oil business. Mm -hmm. That's good. This was her design. This was God's intent for her. How do we know that? Because oil was the most important commodity of their time. Can you imagine? Because oil anointed kings. Oil anointed prophets. Oil was used for lighting. Oil was used for cooking. So we are oil, saying from the top to the bottom. The entire economy needed oil. Hmm. She has what? Only a little oil. Think for a moment. How serious that means. I love the way you, put, you always put it. Yes. That she didn't say about, talk about the, she even talked about the jar. The yes. jar is so small. Yes. Just to show you how man of God, this is bad. Man in, of God. in fact, she started by nothing. <laughs> I have, I have nothing. nothing. But a little jar of oil, meaning the oil is even more little. Mm. Leave alone that, the jar. So the, what is the key to wisdom? What does wisdom do? That's why we sometimes mm. don't get it. Mm. Because you come with your crisis. You hear a word and the word is giving you seed and you're wondering, that's not what I wanted. Hmm. This is not what I'm looking for. Yeah. You didn't hear me. I wanted this problem fixed. And God is saying, no, no, no. Turn around. We're not fixing the problem. Hmm. We're fixing you. You are more important. It's so powerful that it's <laughs> not about fixing the problem. No. It is fixing you. Now, do you realize also when you talk of growth in the things of God, when you come and meditate on the word, that wait, God is growing me. 
Do you realize you can look at a situation and say, are you telling me that I should close my eyes to the situation and open my eyes into the word? Yes. Because if I can now face the word, right now I've been facing the situation, yeah, that's is. why it looks impossible. Yes. Now I face and the word and say, this you're telling me yes. can change my situation. How many people will believe that? I keep asking that in this conversation. How many people will believe that the word of God can change what you're going through right now? That if you hold on to it and say, wait, this is God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, my favorite statement. Yes. That he's telling you, take that instruction. Woman, go back into your house, shut the door, pour the oil. When it is full, go and sell, uh, pay your debt and leave off the rest. Yes. An instruction. Yes. You are telling me that one instruction can bring out what you are saying, that her oil will touch kings. Yes. It will touch prophets. Everything. The whole economy. And listen to this, and this is crucial. Step one. Yeah. This is very, very important. Yes. She's told, what do you have? She says what she has. She gets an instruction. Mm -hmm. Go borrow vessels. Mm -hmm. Go lock yourself. Go pour oil. No other instruction. Yes. Here's our problem. Mm. <laughs> we get part instruction. We take off. We think we know what to do next. Mm. Notice she was given only up to pour oil. Lock yourself in. Yes. When she had done that, she came for another word. Mm. Mm. I have done that. I have arrived here. S the problem with Christendom today. One, most of us are at ground zero. We do not know what an instruction is. Mm. We don't have we a We despise word. it. We don't pay attention. And then there's another group where mm. you get an instruction. You go. You do the part you have been told. And then you take off. You think you have the answer now. You do not wait to say what else is God saying. Now that I followed this, yes. and we are done. Because the first thing that she should have recognized that was important for mm. her to know mm. was that the oil multiplied. In her hands. That was the first thing she needed to understand. <laughs> in her not hands. in the prophet's hands. Wow. If she went, took oil and it poured and it poured and it poured, she would have realized, my goodness, I didn't even know I had this. Mm. Mm. I didn't know I had this capacity. But with all that, yes, she, says, she now had that the I know kingdom this. sense to say, stop. Now that that part worked. Can we go for the next instruction? Exactly. Then if you notice something strange, when she came for the next instruction, yes. she got something very key that if she didn't come back to the prophet, she, she would have, have missed. Have that go sell number one. Yes. Pay off your debt. There you go. That's the key. She should have gone to go. leave. Yes. And you're like, you're living on the rest before you pay your debt. Yes. Please talk yes, about that. Yes, yes. Actually, there were actually three key things she was told. Okay. One, go sell. Yes. You, nobody else. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it has multiplied supernaturally. Yes. But now you have to be natural. Mm. Okay. Go and sell. Yes. That is work. Okay. That is go, find a market, be innovative, mm. be creative, mm. function, find avenues, find this. So it was uh, hard to decide whether she's only going to sell to people who do lamps hmm. or yes. she's only going to sell to, to the priest for the anointing or to sell for the anointing of kings, those fears were now open to her. I hope you're hearing yourself because it is you we are talking to. <laughs> it is you to decide where to go. Yeah. Heaven will not come and tell you, by the way, now go and sell here yes. and then tomorrow go to this other side. No. You're told, go, sell. Yes. Where to go and sell. Exactly. Is and that's why you notice two different things. Yes. The first instruction was specific. Sell. Or no, go, go, lock. go lock yourself and pour. Okay. The second group of, uh, of uh, instructions are now under your control. Mm. Go sell. Go pay your debt. Mm. Notice the first thing you deal with. Remember the problem you came with? The debt. Now you fix it. Do not You had forget. come to me to fix. Mm. Now you fix. Mm. Mm. You didn't need me to fix it. Yes. You could fix it. You just didn't know. So go pay your debt. And then leave off the rest. Make this a lifestyle. Mm. Make this an income. Make this a business. Don't only go sell and pay debt. If you had no. been told, sell and pay debt, you'd be back. I think now that explains to some people right now, when yes. you're dealing with some people and you're telling them, right now, don't pay the debt. Yes. What do you do first? Go lock yourself. Yes. 
in the room. Yes. That dark room. Multiply. Go and multiply there. Go and make your mind fruitful. Because the minute she saw the oil pour, I mean, she had a little yes. jar of oil. Yes. If she pours it in the first vessel yes. and it's not finished, what is happening? It is not the oil changing, it is her who is changing. Exactly. And confidence is coming. You are now yes. saying, listen, I know my God. You are in the room, not in the public. Exactly. Now there are people who are not ready to go and lock themselves. That's called going into the closet. Yes. Where you get to know your father and he gives you an identity that she knows listen as a son of god i live by the word That's and it. she knows one thing the jars are uh, the vessels are full let yes. me go back for an instruction absolutely go in the room you know sometimes old tech mm -hmm. speaks to powerful concepts even more yeah. than the current technology okay in the old days those of us who saw kodak <laughs> and we knew about the processing of print photos yes it once it was short the bible uh, not the bible <laughs> Technology tells you, I'm so yes. used to the Bible, mm. technology tells you that what was processed was a negative. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That thing was called a, a negative. negative. Yes. That negative was taken to the dark room to be processed into a positive, which then became the full color photo you saw. Okay. So you go to the dark room to process your negative, which mm. the world has given you. Mm. Mm. And turn it into a positive and when you come out, oh, yes. it is a quality product that the world can and when you Benefit. come from the dark room, yeah, yeah. the photo is so clear it's because so clean. if you see the negative, I know more, I wish uh, our team yeah, go, go can, to YouTube can get and this. Look. Yeah? Yeah. Because if you get the negative and you look at it, you can't even identify who is that. The but you can see the shapes. You can look at the negative and you have to go to the sun yes, to, see to see. You need the to go. The principles are good. Oh my oh. goodness. Listen, it's time to tell you me. have to go to the sun to, to see. see. You cannot just look mm. at it like this. So mm. you need light to see in the negative who is there. Exactly. But it's still not clear. You have to go to the dark room. Yep. That dark room is where she was sent. Go in. And the Bible says, go lock yourself. That's it. Not just go in. I mean, how can the prophets be so specific? Yes. Go shut the door. Yes. I mean, what else get, was I going get to Get away from your fellow dead speakers. Mm. Get away from the negative environment. And there's something important in the dark room. Yes. The sons were working. They were working. Remember they were the ones who should have been taken yeah, yeah. to the following day. Exactly. No, now they are working. Now they're processing. They're the ones they're who are passing. pouring the oil. Yes. That's a principle. So that when the time you step out, mm. you're ready to go. So you can see that the second part of instructions was in her hands. Mm. Once she was given, it was at her discretion. Mm. If she chose to go to all the market, that's Good. her. If she decided to go to one market. So when you talk about she despised. Yes. Despise here is when you think that which you have cannot sort your problem. Exactly. So I'm looking at what I have. There are some people who tell you, you know what? And especially lately, the groups that we've been meeting and the, some of them we've gone through. Yes. What is in your house? They know yes. what it means. But you're almost like, wait, no, no. You're not telling me right now. It is my mouth that will get me out of this. Yes. You're not telling me right now, it is my hands that can get me out of this. You're not telling me right now, it's my eyes. You're like, there ah, you okay, wait, wait. I despise what I have. There you go. But if you look at Moses, when he was asked, what is in your hand? He also was like, fine, it is a rod, my yes. Lord. What do what I do with it? this? But we see the Bible say, and he took the rod of God in go. his hand. Wait, the rod changed. When you realize that that which you have in your house, it is God. There you go. Coming to tell you, you cannot do this in the earth alone. I need you to give me the permission to come into the earth. Remember? Mm. You're listen, in charge? Listen carefully. Yes. Whatever crisis you think you're in, mm. whatever economic situation you think you're in, Yes. The pressure of the situation is trying to mask the potential you carry. Mm. 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 Making you not see what you already have. That is all that is needed by the wisdom that God gives you to then get you out of the very same situation. Mm. The pressure. Exactly. Because that's why sometimes you're like, listen guys, I know you're saying something good. But my friend, I, I need to get out. I need to go tomorrow morning. Do you notice how she comes with that chance? Yes. And notice what you're saying. Pressure. What does pressure yeah. do? Remember, if you're looking at the word and I just insert pressure on your eyes, what happens to the word? Diminishes. Simple. Diminishes. That's what yes. the enemy wants to do in your life. The enemy wants to make sure you have no time to look at the word because the pressure is too, is too much. You even say it. It's too much. Exactly. You know? And, and if you want to know that the enemy is trying to rob you of something if you're under 
And remember, TCC, we are dealing with economy and wealth at this point. Yes. All right? If, in a financial situation, you're believing that something is wrong, this is how you check. If you think the solution lies outside of you, then you know you're in the, you've already been misled. Mm. If you think what you need must come from outside, mm. not from within. If you think that's where the word comes to you, listen, if the word did not know that there was enough in you to carry out what you need, the word would go get the thing you need and bring it to you. Mm. Why does the word come to you? Because God says, listen, in whatever situation it, you are, inside of you, that situation is trying to mask the solution you already carry. Mm. I love what you just said. That yes. pressure comes to mask yeah. the potential. You already have it. You have it. You and God is so confident. That's why sometimes when you pray, heaven says, listen, don't keep going in circles and cycles. And so. Come to a place of saying, now I stop. Like yes. the woman, I'm going to take the instruction. Yes. You're telling me I go in, I lock myself and my friend, there's a creditor coming. And yeah, then you're you telling me something. Go and sell. Listen, do I have the time? There you go. Do I have the time to go and sell? What does that heaven mean when yes. the heaven tells you, yes. go and sell? Go and sell. We are going to hold time, don't worry. Yes. Time is in our hands. We are going to yeah. hold time, number one. The Bible says that God holds the hearts of kings exactly. and turns it whichever way he wants. Yes. So when you talk about the creditors are coming, heaven says, listen, we hold the hearts of kings. Exactly. Follow an instruction and see heaven step in. Actually, we always call it in TCC. Yes. When you follow an instruction, watch heaven back you up. That's it. Heaven backed her up by first of all holding the creditor because yes. between today and tomorrow she could Good. not have borrowed, sold to start paying the creditor. So yes. that tells you there's a time that the creditor did not turn in. Meaning heaven was holding the heart of the kings and turned it towards her favor. Uh, so, yeah. so was there a supernatural process? Yes. Yes. The oil multiplied. Meaning sometimes that little concept, that idea you have, take it to the dark room, you'll be shocked. Mm. At how it begins to, oh, we could do that also. And that, I've just remembered that and that. And suddenly it's multiplying. Mm. It's multiplying supernaturally. Then what is the next thing it does? It creates something. Remember what we said? We are continuing to say in this process. Yes. That the power to produce wealth is wisdom, knowledge that produces joy. Yes. Did she get wisdom from the prophet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did she now have to use knowledge? Yes. Did it produce joy? Yes. By the time she's leaving off the rest, be sure there's joy in her life. That's the power of this process. Yes. So, in conclusion, on this particular context, it's time for you to, and, and like we said, this scripture has so many layers, you'll still see us come back again in the future to unpack it on another dimension mm. because it's one of the most practical, one of the most efficient, one of the most correctly positioned scriptures that brings you to a place where you have no excuse. Mm, yeah. Listen, this was a widow. Please. It doesn't say a business woman. Mm, mm. Her husband has died. So let's, go, let's look at all her trauma. You've just lost your husband. Mm -hmm. So you're in grief. Yes. In serious trauma. Mm -hmm. You are a widow now, which yes. means you have no means of production. You are in debt. Okay? And then the only means that could have helped you, your children, are be about to be taken mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Then you come for a solution and all God gives you is a word. You cannot be in a worse situation than this mm -hmm. woman was in. And we are saying that she has reached possible. her end. She yeah. had come to this place where she says, listen, when I look at where I am, yes. listen, I can't do anything. Yeah. But she recognizes that in this situation, there is only one thing I can do. At least I have the power to walk into the man's man of God's presence. Yes. And she goes to this place. Now, when we say and the even, man of and God. And even with the wrong expectation. Yes. It is better to come with the wrong expectation than not to come. So at this point, when we say the man of God, she knew one thing. Only the word of God can get me out of this. That's why she went to the man of God. All right. So she's reached her end. Now, when she comes to the man of God, he activated wisdom 
and knowledge, That's which it. of course produced joy. Immediately. But as he activates the wisdom and knowledge, we saw her despise her situation. She despises what she has. Why? She's a widow. Yeah. She's grieving. Yes. Her children are about to be taken off. The pressure is too much. So when you tell me about the word, I tell you, listen, can we now first of all ele elevate this and then we can talk about the word? That's what many people it's do. It's true. And, and in fact, that's she, what many she, people yeah. do. And she's like many of us. She even kind of was trying to manipulate the man of God because she's a son of a prophet. My husband loved God. We've all loved God. We are not sinners. Think of all those things. Yeah. We're talking about wealth transfer. And we're talking about a season when the believer is now going to the king, to the marketplace to find their space. We will repeat that until you get that. We are not sending you to the marketplace. You've always been there. We are now telling you in the marketplace, find your space. Because if you find your space, that's where you thrive. She found her, her space. That's where she was thriving. So we are saying like the uh, prophet Elisha sent her into yep. her space. That's and it. in this space, she could talk to the kings, to the prophets and to the nation exactly. because she carried what the economy of the nation required. Now, when we talk about our meeting on the October 14th, uh, 14th of October, yes. and we invite you, we are talking about the believer in the market space. Listen to this. Hello and welcome to Business Unusual. In this season, we call Kingdom Business Reformation. I'd like to invite you to our open meeting where we'll discuss two very interesting pathways that could be existing even in your own world right now that we need to create a clear distinction between. The one place is called the Christian in the marketplace. The other place is called the Kingdom Citizen in the market space. Now these two dynamics may sound the same, they're not. And they're in a, in, a, in a nutshell, they are informed by two different paradigms, two different ways of thinking. And those two dimensions of thinking will determine whether the kingdom of God has an impact in the earth or not. The Christian in the marketplace, on average, is somebody who's surviving, barely holding out, always hoping for a miracle, for a divine intervention, for something to change. In fact, they're almost holding on as long as they can and eventually many times end up exiting and saying I'm going to full-time ministry because that space is hostile they are not designed to operate in it the most they think they can do is survive it but when we talk about the kingdom citizen in the market space they are the divine intervention they are the change you're looking for they are the journey process that functions and if we understand that then we'll understand the actual movement of kingdom economy and what we talk about in terms of kingdom impact. So we need to be clear in which of these two dynamics are you operating from. What informs you? And we'll be discussing a core fundamental problem in the thinking processes of the Christian in the marketplace that makes them ineffective in the very space they are in. So they always have to run back into a space called church and then go out there and weather the storms. But when we talk about the kingdom business person, in the market space, this person can thrive, function, grow, impact, make change. And there are certain keys, tools and principles that determine how you function in both. So please join us and ask someone to come with you. This could be life changing. It's been there since the foundation of the world. Reshaping man's thoughts and ideas of life and redirecting man's pursuit in life to fit its agenda. It's a matter of these guys working through men endlessly using every way to hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's Mammon, the spirit behind money. Charles and Susan Opil in their book Unmasking Mammon help their readers unmask this deadly spirit and embark on a journey back to the Father. Unmasking Mammon is a must read. Now available on Amazon and on order at cyruscom254 at gmail.com for physical copies. Grab your copy today and start off your journey to overcoming the spirit of Mammon. Unmasking Mammon by Charles and Susan Opio. Keep it kingdom, keep it pure.